The trophies for the Siege of Paris DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla are live on PS4 right now and they give us a ton of new information including confirmation of a very exciting leak that we discussed earlier this week. Since Jordan is gone for the day, Joyce and I will talk you through all of it. A like on the video would really help the channel out and let's go! If you would like some extra Helix credits for Assassin's Creed Valhalla to buy some cool items in the Helix store or maybe one of the upcoming ones like that Jormungandr set, remember to enter our weekly Helix credit giveaway. You can find the link to it in the pinned comment down below and remember that you have to be a subscriber of the channel before you can enter. Good luck! So like I said, we now know what the trophies for the Siege of Paris DLC are going to be. If you're on the PS4 version of the game, you can find 9 new trophies under the Siege of Paris tab. Some of these are very similar to what we saw for the Druids DLC, but there is some exciting new info in there as well, so let's go through all of them in order. For the first two trophies, do what is right and know what is right, we see something very similar to the Druids trophies. Do what is right has us complete the Siege of Paris campaign, and know what is right requires you to complete all territories in Francia. I'm curious curious as to how long this will take. In Wrath of the Druids the story took about 8 to 9 hours if you just focused on that before you saw the end. So at the very least I think we can see something similar for Siege of Paris. But I hope of course that the second DLC runs just a little bit longer. Completing all territories will of course take a lot longer as you will need to complete all territory markers on the map. The next trophy, We Nobles 3, makes mention of three Frankish nobles that we need to defeat in order to get this trophy. Now this definitely sounds like there will be three boss fights waiting for us, which may be similar to the Drengir, which we of course also saw make their return in the Wrath of the Druids DLC. Thanks to the data mining efforts of Petter and the videos from Andy Reloads, linked to his channel, will be in the video description, we of course also know about a new type of zealot called the Bellatoris Dei, who might show up in the DLC, but I personally don't think that they are related to this trophy. Let's dive further into these trophies with the Vive La Resistance trophy, and this sounds very exciting as it mentions a new feature that we'll be seeing in the new DLC. Reach maximum infamy in the Rebel missions. Not sure what this infamy mechanic is going to look like, but this confirms that the Rebel missions that were dug up a while back are coming with Siege of Paris 2. And the way the trophy is worded, reach maximum infamy in the Rebel missions, makes me think this might be a scoring system that is active during a mission rather than that renown meter we saw for Dublin that increased when completing trade requests. Maybe infamy is an easier version of the scoring system like that of the mastery challenges that will be active during these Rebel missions. Of course, let us know your take on this and the other trophies down in the comments below. For our next trophy, we have the Bad Bull, which sees us defeating the Ghost Auric boss. An Auric is a species of an ox, so the closest thing we've seen to it in the game is probably Alfred's Battle Sow, the legendary bull you can find in England. Also, the trophy icon shows a picture of a bull, so it's pretty obvious what kind of animal we are going to fight. Not sure about the ghost part of the name, although for most of these legendary animals, it turned out to be nothing more than a nickname, so it will probably just be a very pale aura. Cool to see another legendary animal fight added regardless. What is even cooler is the Vandange Trophy, which confirms something that we discussed earlier this week, namely the existence of side weapons. The description reads, kill an enemy with a side while wearing the full reaper set. So not only do we get a side, we also get to cosplay as the Grim Reaper in order to get this trophy. I mean, that just sounds badass to me. The Reaper set was of course also found in the files by Petter and seems to give your life back on an assassination according to the perk. So it seems to be a perfect fit for stealth focused players. But let's talk a bit more about sides here now that we actually know that they are coming to the game. This means that Valhalla will receive not just the one-handed swords, but sides as well in the coming weeks, which is pretty insane. And if all the swords and sides that are currently in the game files do turn up in the Siege of Paris, this means that we will have access to four weapons in each category, which is a massive step up from the two sickles found in the Wrath of the Druids DLC. I mean, that DLC did have the amazing gay bulk spear, of course, but I think it's way more exciting to have more of these new weapon types to play around with. Let's move on to the next trophy on the list, Pet the Cats, which has you pet all of the cats in Evro. Since we have no clue as to how big Evro will be and how many cats there are, it's hard to tell if this will be a difficult trophy to get or not, but the mention of Evro is of course interesting. It is a city in the region of Normandy, which pretty much confirms Normandy as one of the territories we'll be traveling to. 
As our second to last trophy, we have the Les Majeste, for which you have to complete 10 rebel missions. Kind of similar again to that trophy from Breath of the Druids, where you had to complete 10 royal demands. I mean, it makes sense as these rebel missions will probably be Paris equivalent for these royal demands. I hope the rewards for these will be better though than we saw in the Druids DLC as the royal demands basically stopped being useful after you completed all your trading contracts in Dublin. They're still fun to do, of course, but it will be nice to see this new activity carry a nice reward with it in Siege of Paris. The final trophy is a hidden trophy, so spoilers ahead. If you want to skip ahead, just check the timestamps in the video bar below to skip the spoiler part. You still there? Okay, for our final trophy we have Future Past, enter the Assassin Bureau in Francia. Now the main game had 6 of these Assassin Bureaus where you could find the Hidden One's Armor Set and the Suttinger's Claw Dagger and you could also read up on the past efforts of the Hidden Ones in England. The new trophy mentions a single Assassin Bureau which leads me to believe that this one might be a bit bigger than the ones we found so far in England. Those had some puzzles which you needed to solve in order to get to the loot but I'd be a bit disappointed if Ubisoft decided to add just another one of those, especially since this one in Francia has got its own trophy. So like we said, these trophies already give us a lot of cool information on the Siege of Paris DLC, but there is still a bit more to discuss. I'm not sure if you remember, but back in March, French YouTuber Jonathan revealed a list of trophies for both the Druids and the Paris DLC. We later discovered that these turned out to be the connect challenges in the case of the Druids DLC, but they were spot on when it came to the names and objectives, so it's fair to assume that the same is true for the Paris DLC. Now most of these leaked challenges refer to things we already know are going to be in the DLC, like the one-handed swords or the Plague of Rats ability. But the interesting one is the sweet kiss from Paris, which has a skill 5 members of the Order of the Ancients in France. Now once again this information comes from a data mine so take it with a grain of salt but since the Wrath of the Druids challenges proved to be spot on I would not be surprised at all to see a new branch of the Order of the Ancients in the Siege of Paris DLC. And all this new information has gotten us really excited for the Paris DLC especially now that sites are confirmed as a new weapon type. I can't wait to see how they play once we finally get our hands on them. Once we learn more about the Siege of Paris DLC we will of course let you know so subscribe to miss nothing, leave a like if you liked the video and check out our previous video about Reddit selection for this week and some new armor sets that are coming to the game. You can watch it by clicking on the screen or we will link to it at the end of the photo mode showcase that we do at the end of every Valhalla video. You can send in your shots via the Valhalla Raptor hashtag on Twitter or in the dedicated pictures channel on our Discord. You can join the Discord via the link in the pinned comment and remember that you have to accept the rules before you are able to post. For now, I'm going to throw it back to your enjoys from the past for the photo mode showcase. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, Joyce, come in. You, of course, are the photo mode expert here on the channel. And you like the three shots from the community. So I'm always curious which one did you pick this time. Hello, hello. We start with Zohair19 over on Discord, where Eivor is lunging ahead of a druid cultist far away from the body. <laughs> beheaded in a very interesting way, I see, because Eivor is not using the duo wield Gelpolk spears on the back. Must be one hell of a punch. Wow, yeah. How? how? It's like a oh, shoulder bash. Maybe, or something. Is it like I a finisher? Know. Yeah, yeah, it must be. I don't know, so air, but I love the shot. Thanks. Moving on to Blue Eyes Fox, who took this really cute selfie of the Irish Hound that you can, of course, get as an ability in Wrath of the Druids DLC. Look how happy it is fighting alongside Eivor. I tried this before myself, but the dog is always very aggressive in my shots, so very nice timing. Oh, that's really, really cute. Yeah. And last but not least, we've got the Merc Successin who's taking matters into his own hands by using Mjolnir and aiming for whatever is coming his way. I actually love the lighting around the hammer here yeah. and I will never get enough of that effect. It's also one of my favorite weapons in the game. Yeah, and I wish we could throw it because, again, it seems like he's aiming. But We should be able to throw it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had bugs for that. Like, I think someone yeah. like, I showed that like a real long time ago. Either way, of course, subscribe for more Valhalla content. Check out our previous video by clicking on the screen. For now, we'll speak to you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.